OK, we're boring a Chev 350 block here. Um, I had to put a sleeve in one cylinder to fix it up. Um, we're, what we're using is a, is a big milling machine. It's, um, it's what's called a knee mill because the knee here, this part here, actually moves up and down into the spindle, which is here. Now, these machines are built incredibly square, so you can trust... I mean, you check it, of course, but you can, you can trust that the machine's square. What we do when we set up a V8 block particularly is um, we start with machined parallel blocks and then end up with machined uh, V-blocks. OK, now these, all, these, all these blocks are machined as pairs, so they're all exactly the same height. And by setting them up like that, both ends, you end up with your V-blocks being square with the bed of your mill. We then put a bar in the block and it's, it's clamped into the main tunnel clamped into the main tunnel like that. So the V-blocks are square with the mill. The bars square with the mill. Therefore, your main tunnel's square with the mill. Then you can surface your top square with your main tunnel and you can bore your cylinders square with your main tunnel as well. So there's a lot of um, talk goes into you know square decking and square boring and that sort of thing. A, a simple setup like this, which is just a fairly standard setup that you'll find most shops using, will produce the same results. It's just an easy way to set them up. How I centre the ma machine, I've, there's a lot of boring machines around that um, use an air float head or what's called cat's paws to centre the, the, um, the bar, but what I use is simply an indicator and you just check it on your four corners, on your four, four points, uh, two points on the Y axis, two points on the X axis and, and centre it. Bring it around, make sure you centre all the way around. Once we're happy that the indicator is reading true, so that, so that we know that the spindle's in the centre of the bore, we can centre it. A zero the DRO, I mean, that just it'll just tell us if something's moved. Now this is interesting. A Chev should be 4.4 inch centres, but I'm 4.398 and a half, so I'm one and a half thou off the um, the correct centre. That's because this has been bored before, and it's been bored in a no doubt in a production machine, which would have an air float table or an air float head. And it uses cat spores, which is three or four little little fingers that come out an equal distance on the spindle and centre the block under the spindle or centre the spindle un in the block. But the reason you're boring the cylinder in the first place is because there's wear and it's normally on the thrust side. Um, and so they're centering the block not in the centre of the original bore, but centering the block in the wear. That way um, they can ensure that they've got uh, enough metal in their cut to, to clean up the wear. But it does shift the bore spaces. And what I like to, to do with... Um, the reason I like to use this setup is because using the DRO, I can put the bores anywhere I want. I can keep them um, dead squared straight up off the tunnel and I can keep them on their bore centres. So I might need to shift them around. If I've sonic tested the block and with the cut that I'm about to do, I'm not going to end up with enough um, thickness on the thrust side. I could move it away from the thrust side a little bit. Um, th there's a lot of, lot of scope for... Uh, for, for Putting the ball where you need it to be, not just relying on your cat's ball. So that's why I like to like to use this this setup. The other thing is, on a lot of boring machines, production boring machines, they use a tool where the tool pops out. You set it on a on a direct reading micrometer, and then you pop it back in. But it's always scary. You never know where, where the bloody other thing is going to bore. So what I've got here is a, just a pretty standard boring head. Try and get some light in on it. Um, and what you can do, I don't know if you can see that, is you can take a small cut measure it, say, all right, I'm 12 thou away. So you give it 6 thou on the on the, the dial here. That, that winds the whole tool out 6 thou, which will give you 12 thou extra cut. And away you go. I leave, normally I leave, like to leave about 3 thou in for honing. I use diamond hone stones. Um, so they keep it very, very rigid uh, and keep the ball very parallel and very round. Um, so I, I hone pretty much the size with that and then use either 240s or 400s, depending on what type of rings we're going to use to get the, uh, the surface finish and, and bring that last half a thou um, to size. Um, yeah, OK, so we're good to go. We've zeroed everything, we've centred everything. We'll just bring the table up. And as it gets close, we'll start running the cutter. There she goes. Poke a light in underneath. There she goes. That's nice and central. You can hear it. It's, um, it's cutting nice and central. Make sure you get the glasses on because the cast iron goes in your eyes. And then that runs down.
So this is running down. Zero is about the bottom of the about the bottom of the bore. Then I'll shift the block over and do that cut again. The, the bore's down. The, the, the boring bar's come down and it's cut all the way down. I'm going to try and get in here and just see if we can see something. Uh, where are we? Okay, okay. So where's my pointer? Yeah, come on. That's the boring head there. Okay, and the tool's out this side. There's an area over here on the shebs that, and the holders is a real problem. It, it's where the bore comes down and um, comes down square into the into the main web. And the problem with that, you've got to make sure you, you bore right through into that because you've got, you've got to run the hone out the top and also out the bottom to get it nice and round. But the problem is, is if you just bore down there, you're getting into it'll wear the, the, uh, the bottom of your hone stones, you'll end up with a tapered bore. So what I do at this stage, I flick it on. So you can, so once I know that I'm through the bolt of the bore, I'll then move the table or move the block into the cutter on that side by about 10 thou, and then we'll lock her up, and then we'll feed that up for half an inch, and that'll clear. That'll now make a, uh, an undercut in that problem area, so that the hone stones won't won't be affected by it. And there she goes. So that gives me. Um, yeah, half a thou of, of clear area under the hone. So now it's so the, the block's bored. I'm bored to um, two th uh, three thou under me finish size. Um, it's milled, bored square with the main tunnel, milled square with the main tunnel. Oh, the other thing I do with this setup is um, when I've milled the sides, I change the cutter and, and mill the, the deck. Then what I'll do is I'll leave the table in the same height, roll the block over on the bar in the V block. So again, the bar's sitting at the same height. The, the decks are, are the, same, um, the same height. So when I mill the other side at the same uh, table uh, knee height, both decks will end up not only square with the tunnel, but the same height off the tunnel. And so when you put your engine together and you check your, your uh, piston protrusion or your piston heights um, in the four corners, they're, they're within a thou or two. They, they very rarely vary much more than that. So um, it's just a, an easy, it's a simple setup that works very, very well. Um, it's a little bit more time consuming boring a cylinder in, uh, in a milling machine like this than it is in a, in a production um, boring machine. But I, I far prefer this. I'd, I'd rather put a bit more time into the job. So yeah, that's, that's cylinder boring.